Sounds like you're starting to get familiar with the area. Paimon's amazed every time we see the wall of Samiel. How can a wall this tall even exist? It's almost... unreal. I know what you mean. I had the same question every time I walked this way when I was a kid. Also, why is this high wall here? And can a wall really block sandstorms? It was only after I grew up that I realized the wall of Samiel isn't just there to keep out the sandstorms. It serves a more important purpose, keeping out people like us. Sumeru is run by wise and mighty sages. To them, us desert dwellers are nothing but tools that can be used and discarded at their whim. We're cheap labor, like livestock, but easier to control. Nothing more. Even if a child from the desert got the chance to obtain an Akasha terminal, almost all their requests for knowledge would be denied. The Academia believes we're underserving. Geniuses like Satari are one in a million. The other children never get a single chance to try and rewrite their fate, even though the Academia knows very well that we're humans, just as they are. I would tear down this wall with my own hands if I could. Hey, Dia. Uh, you're not thinking about doing anything scary, are you? Uh, no, not at all. This place just gets me thinking, that's all. And besides, we're here to procure information, aren't we? Yep! Caravan Rebot is crawling with people, so be careful what you say. We don't want anyone to find out what we're here for. Our mission started the moment we arrived here. Let's go check out the tavern. Maybe we'll find someone I know. Just our luck. None of them are here today. You mean, you don't see anyone you know? Dia, is that you? <laughs> what a coincidence. You here for a drink too? Hmm? Zaki? <laughs> Finally, a friendly face. Oh, and who do you have with you here? Guests from another land? Hello, hello! I'm Zaki. Dia's, uh, how would you put it? Drinking buddy? <laughs> We've had drinks together a few times. You could say we go back a ways. Anyway, as far as my friends here, they aren't too shabby, are they? You rarely see any outlander so friendly and respectful nowadays. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than those people on the other side of the wall. So, Dia. Are you looking for someone? Yeah. Have you seen Enger, Delavar, or Jabari recently? Of course I have. Matter of fact, we were all here drinking together just a few days ago. I've got a spice trading deal from another nation. I thought maybe Delavar and his friends might be interested. Know where I could find him? Ah, how thoughtful of you. Then I assume you also know that Delavar's been having a hard time making ends meet these days, so you came here to help him out? Hey, keep it down. Let's just say I prefer to keep this deal a secret. Y'all at Caravan Rebot are like family. If there's more to be made, why not do it together? Besides, Delavar and his friends have muscle. They'd be a good fit for escorting the goods. <laughs> yes, how considerate of you. Delavar's my friend, too, so of course I can take you to him. Come with me.
there yet? Yep. This is the place. This place is practically deserted. What are they doing in a place like this? <laughs> Why don't you take a guess? Go on. A wild stab in the dark. <laughs> You're like lambs to the slaughter. Uh. Oh no! It's an ambush! Uh, what's this all about, Zaki? Come on, Dia. You really think we didn't hear about what you said back in Aru village? The boys have kept a close eye on you from the moment you set foot there. Not only do I know that you're looking for Delavar, I also know that you've teamed up with people from the Academia to look for the missing scholars. So, you've been watching us from the very beginning? Uh-oh. Paimon knew leaving Sino behind was a mistake! <laughs> and you left the strongest one in the village, didn't you? Who do you think you are? You really thought we'd fall for your little business deal nonsense? So you and Delavar have been partners all along. <laughs> Dia, I guess it's only natural for a traveling mercenary like you to be out of the loop. Those of us who hang around the tavern have stronger bonds than you think. But you got one thing right. We're all looking forward to an uprising in Sumeru. There's nothing more we'd like to see than the desert folk overthrowing the Academia. If that's the case, then I'm sure Delavar wouldn't miss a second of it. I'll be honest with you. If it weren't for what you said in the village, your little monologue about the Wall of Samuel would have convinced me that you're one of us. Delavar. And Enger. You're here too, huh? Long time no see, Miss Mercenary. You should have known the traitors are what us followers of King Deshret despise the most. Dia, I thought that you, a fellow desert dweller, would understand why King Deshret is greater than the Dendro Archon. Little did I know, you don't deserve to join us. <laughs> yeah, gee, what a missed opportunity. Adopting radical views and kidnapping innocent scholars, all because of some baseless rumors? <laughs> Anything else I'm missing out on? See? There you have it. Mercenaries are just a bunch of faithless scum with only one thing on their minds. Mora. Pathetic. You're all like a pack of street rats. You're not wrong. Mercenaries are driven by Mora, and my faith lies with whoever's paying me. As long as there's a profit to be made, anyone can become my friend. Enough talking! Get him! <laughs> Just as I expected. Let's teach him a lesson, Traveler. Following orders. Our bond is strong. Buckle up. Can't see. Scatter. I'll settle this. Stand with me. Take that. Take that. You asked for it. Impossible! How could you? So, what do you think about your meticulous network now, Zaki? How did you say it? It's only natural for a traveling mercenary like me to be out of the loop. I'm guessing your informant told you that I'm just an incompetent merc with no real fighting skills, correct? I mean, that is what I said after all. And of course you would believe everything he reported. The only thing you know about me is that I'm a mercenary, but you've never seen me in action. Even though you heard we went to handle monsters together, you believed that Candace was the only one doing all the real fighting. That so-called flame mane is just a fraud. She admitted it herself. 
She just uses her connections to gain the trust of others. That's what you thought, right? Ugh. You lied in the village because you figured that we'd have people watching you. And you were stupid enough to fall for it. I figured as much the first time we drank together. You all thought you were so smart. Pathetic. Okay, that should be all of them. Whoa! So you've been planning this since we were in Aru Village? No task can be done without preparation. I just happened to notice a couple suspicious-looking people while you were out investigating. Oh, but instead of catching them right away, you let them report back! Those two who were snooping around were just a couple small fries. If we want to get the real catch, we have to be patient and give it some time. Oh! You mean the funny name she mentioned back in Uncle Ampu's house? The Wide-Eyed Butcher, Scarlet Old Bandit... Uh... Um, uh Paimon can't remember them all. That's just a bunch of drunk talk. Enger and Delavar like to talk themselves up when they're drinking. Enger the Wide-Eyed Butcher and Delavar the Scar-Riddled Bandit are the nicknames they came up with for themselves. Alcohol has a way of making people share what they really think. So Enger and Delavar are always rambling in the tavern about how King Deshred is a superior deity. What about Zaki? He's just a numbskull who fell right into our trap. Zaki was probably the best hidden of them all. My initial plan was to find Delavar first, and then try to track him down. That's what you wanted to ask when we were at Uncle Anpu's house, right? Jabari is one of the villagers you talked to. You know, the one who wanted to treat Isak and his grandpa to some food. Wait, so he's a radical too? No, he isn't. I just needed to tack on a random villager name to make the eavesdropper think that I was making some wild guesses based on my impressions. Wow! What a genius idea! Well, that's an expert mercenary for ya! Ah, you're too kind. It was straight from the usual playbook, if I'm honest. So, that thing you were saying before, is it really true? Hmm? About what? About how mercenaries only care about Mora, and that anyone's a friend as long as there's a profit. Does that bother you? What makes you so sure? Uh... Dia, do you dislike the Dendro Archon like the other desert folk? <laughs> you two are pretty sharp. No. I don't have anything against the Dendro Archon. I've heard a lot of nice things about the Lesser Lord from Dunyarzad. I can understand her devotion and gratitude. Dunyarzad's just an ordinary person. There's no way a god would be so involved in the lives of everyday people, unless they were truly compassionate. I've begun to realize that the Sages are behind everything that's happened recently. The Radical's blind belief in King Deshret, making the Dendro Archon out to be an enemy. Tch, it's all the Academia's trickery. But I see through it all. And unlike them, I can never be hostile towards anyone who's never done anything wrong. Dia. Anyway, looks like we're done with business here. Traveler, lend me a hand. Let's tie him up and bring him to the village. This should be all of them. I'll let you take it from here. All right. I'll be in touch. Until then, please stand by. Candace, do you need any help? Candace will be okay on her own. I trust her, so you can too. She's been guarding Aru Village for quite some time now. If anyone is qualified to question the offenders, it's her. While I'm questioning them. Why don't you pass some time by exploring the area? I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, Traveler. As for these idiots, let's just hope they live to see another day.
idea. Right on time. <laughs> we'll know any moment now. Paimon's been wondering. You seem to know Candace pretty well. Have you been friends for a long time? We've known each other for some time now. She's a pretty interesting person. Even though she's an extremely strong warrior, she never misuses her powers against others. Oh, Paimon knows what you mean. Like a lot of martial artists say, never take the fight outside the ring. Yep, I guess you can put it that way. It takes strong convictions to be as dedicated as she is, and shoulder that kind of responsibility. Us mercs, on the other hand, we pretty much live from one day to the next. Well, Paimon thinks you're great, too. Really? Thanks for that. Oh! Sino's here! And he's pretty early, too! Yes. I was here yesterday to help out a little. To help out? By doing what? Sharing some interrogation techniques. Oh! Um, you mean you taught Candace some more... persuasive methods? Right. Come on in, everyone. Come on, let's go inside. Candace, where? Whoa, you look furious. Do I? What gave it away? Oh, there's no mask that can hide true bloodlust. Cover up your eyes, and it'll still show itself at the corners of your mouth. Perhaps I need to work on my composure. Still, it's perfectly understandable why I'm angry. I'm sure everyone present would agree. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Please, don't feed us anymore. We're gonna die. Well, looks like Sino taught her well. <laughs> you fear death yourselves, yet you do not hesitate to place the lives of others at risk. <laughs> the absurdity is mind-boggling. The ones you call mad scholars are known to us as the village keepers. They are vital members of our community, and some even count them as family. You come here, to my village, and you treat my people as nothing more than stepping stones towards your goal. Tell me, what would you do to you in my position? Uh, mercy! Please have mercy! You've made your bed. We may all be desert dwellers, but there is one thing that I understand better than you. The resurrection of King Deshret will only result in war. And war serves no one. The people of Aru Village care little about which god is in power. Life may be tough and tiring, but we wish to preserve our way of life. A war would only cause us to lose all that we have. And that is not a responsibility that you can afford to shoulder. Uh, we understand. We're sorry! I'll tell you everything I know. Please, just let us go. I'm listening. Uh, you might not believe this, but it wasn't us who came up with this idea. Someone was spreading rumors in the tavern. That's how we ended up hearing about King Deshret's resurrection. Some mystery man told us that mad scholars will make the perfect sacrifice to usher in King Deshret's resurrection. They give their lives, and we can get anything we wish for. They're called village keepers. Slip up again, and you'll regret it. Uh, yes, sorry! It was all that mystery man's doing. He told us to spread the word about King Deshret's resurrection, and talked us into helping him. In return, he said he'll help facilitate the resurrection process. I'm not sure. That's one. Huh? One what? Strike. You get a total of three. Then, you die by my hand. 
Wait, I'm telling the truth. We don't know anything. It was all him. <sighs> Two. He got us to lure them out of their houses in the night with some kind of incense. We take them to a junction outside the village. Then the mystery guy takes them from there. <sighs> you gotta believe me, please. I'm telling the truth, I swear. Just ask them if you don't believe me. That was indeed the truth. Traveler, go on. You have to believe me. If I knew that, I would have told you his name right away. I'm not risking another beating to keep his secrets. No way! He, uh, um, that guy, he wears a cloak, and he's always careful to cover his face. Uh, he calls himself King Deshret's envoy. I believe I may know what's going on. Uncle Anpu? What do you mean? <laughs> Smooth. Okay, speak. If my suspicions are correct, this mystery man they speak of could be from the Academia. Hmm. Some time ago, people from the Academia attempted to take the Village Keepers away. I refused, insisting that they are part of our community. It strikes me now that this secretive character shares the same goal they had. Which means it's highly likely that the Academia was purposely spreading a false rumor to trick the Radicals into delivering the Village Keepers right into their hands. <laughs> They were the ones who brought them here to begin with. Now they're trying to take them back? We aren't gonna let that happen. Not the Academia again. Just as I thought. But what could they want with the Village Keepers? People are nothing but tools in the eyes of the Academia. A change in their plans likely means they found another way to exploit the Scholars. <sighs> Regardless, our top priority now is locating the Village Keepers. You're right. Isaka's still waiting for news on his grandpa. Time to go. Let's leave the village and try to track them down. Yes. Pack up and get ready to leave. You got it. Candace, I'll let you deal with the Radicals. Leave everything outside the village to us. All right. Let's meet back here once everyone's ready! As you can see, I am merely sitting here and reviewing what we have deduced thus far. You were gone for ages! And now you're suddenly sitting here musing to yourself? Where have you been anyway? Hey! What's with the silence? You never think things through before asking questions. I'm giving you some time to make up for that. Uh, uh, Paimon's so mad! Paimon's gonna give you an ugly nickname! Uh, um, uh, never mind. Paimon's got nothing. There's just nothing super obvious to pick with this guy. It makes it so hard. Well, you've heard nothing to suggest I left this whole time. So clearly, I stayed in the village to investigate. Anyway, you plan to leave Aru village and keep searching for the truth of this matter, yes? <sighs> yep. We're not gonna find out anything more by staying here, so we thought that we might as well take the search elsewhere. Hmm. 
No. I'm just surprised that you decided to team up with him. All Haytham. You haven't helped us out at all ever since we arrived at Aru Village. Bold of you to question our choices. Yeah, you're all talk! While you were investigating, I had my own work to do, which I've now finished. Really? Paimon doesn't believe you. To be honest, we aren't really a team, so I have no obligation to inform you of my whereabouts. Not to mention that going separate ways allowed me to find some important information that you all had missed. Huh? Right here in the village? Correct. What did you learn? I'm going to take you to someone. But before that, you need to understand where she's coming from. What does that mean? How do you think the residents of Aru Village feel about what we're doing? In other... Tell me.